I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and in this video, I'm gonna be talking about things were up and down. Well, I got an email coaching today from a guy that was in a relationship for 10 years, and it wound up not working out, obviously. That's why we're doing a coaching here. But, you know, no relationship is ever always gonna be great. There's gonna be difficult times, and there's so many different reasons for that, stress, work, environment, uh, family issues, um, focusing on your own needs and maybe being selfish at times. There's so many things that can happen. But a big thing that happens is one of our partners can be struggling with their own mental health. And, you know, unfortunately, trauma has to get talked about and dealt with Otherwise, it just keeps coming back and resurfacing, often in the time in the form of a, de a depression, right? And so, when you get with somebody and you start a relationship with them, a lot of times we don't really understand that their past and their history is going to come up. And ideally, you know, you find a partner that's worked through a lot of their stuff. So they're in a better place to have something long-term and meaningful and less likely to have issues come up. Now, this email coaching is from a guy in his mid-30s and his girlfriend was just a couple years younger and they've been together for 10 years, okay? Uh, since 2011, okay? And they were living together since about 2012. So. You can see it's been a long time together and he was a PhD student and has a career now and she's gone through a couple of different careers. But he said that his ex returned home for a trip in the fall of 2021. She was sad. She has a history of depression and anxiety and there is also a past of self-harm, sexual abuse, a suicide attempt, and alcoholism, all before I met her. So those are all very serious things, right? She was hurting herself at some point, likely because of the sexual abuse and the trauma from that. And, um, you know, that's often a big reason that people do commit suicide. Um, but please, if you ever are in that situation and you feel like that, get help. Wherever you are in this world, we have, you know, people all around the world watching. Look up suicide prevention hotlines in your area. I know you can get overwhelmed at times, but there are always going to be people that care about you and don't want to see anything happen to you. Of course, Margaret and I and Victoria now never want to see you guys struggle with that. So please get yourself help, okay? It does get better. But this woman had struggled with that for a while. And I suspect that's a big part of why they broke up, right? Okay, let me go on. She said, I didn't talk to her enough while she was away and that she felt like we had become friends who cuddled. So maybe she was saying, you know, I don't feel this romantic spark with you and I'm feeling disconnected from you. On, maybe on some level she felt abandoned, but it, it doesn't feel like any kind of reason to break up here, right? N not what she's saying there. And he even went on to say, we talked every day, so I'm not sure about that. Meaning, I guess, that um, he didn't talk to her enough. And that, that just doesn't feel authentic. It feels like it feels like she doesn't understand what's really bothering her. That's what it feels like. 
And so she's blaming it on this thing. Well, I didn't talk to you enough. Like she's kind of using him for a crutch or something, but it just doesn't feel like enough to walk away. I mean, they've been together for 10 years, right? Doesn't even feel close. It feels more like she's just not sure what's going on. The second point, yes, the intimacy had dropped off. Her depression and self-loathing had made her not interested in the past. And I told her that I th thought I was respecting her wishes and that I could initiate more. Well, that's nice and considerate, but she could also initiate more, right? There are two people. And let me tell you, you don't always want to be the one initiating. And if you're somebody uh, that's listening right now and you always want your partner to initiate, it's not a good feeling for them, okay? You want to initiate as well. If you want them to be happy, initiate. Both people need to make an effort to initiate rela uh, intimacy in a relationship. Both people, okay? It's not all on him and it's not all on her, but. I suspect she wasn't initiating much. And so that's important too, okay? Let me go on. Things improved a bit after this, and she said she didn't expect me to be able to read her mind, good, and things went up and down. She said she was feeling miserable and she didn't know what was wrong. That sounds like a depression to me, okay? She's got all kinds of trauma and abuse. Maybe she's having an anniversary reaction. Um, she did go home, okay? That's likely where the abuse happened, maybe even in the same house, or maybe she came across some of those same people, but I bet that's a big part of this, right? That would be the first thing I would ask him if we were talking. I actually had that happen in a call recently. Uh, maybe in the last month, I said that, and I was she, this, the woman had went home, and I'm like, to the bedroom where the abuse happened? And he's like, you know, I'm not sure, but now that you say it, probably, because that was how she grew up. So that could bring up trauma, right? Grief, anger, depression, all tied together. All right. She said she wasn't feeling miserable and didn't know what was wrong, but she felt it was the relationship. And while she wasn't sure if it was the right thing to do, she thought we should end it. I think she just doesn't know what to do here. I think she's so confused about where this is coming from and what she's unhappy about that she's kind of looking for anything and feels like, all right, I, maybe it's the relationship. And while I think the relationship was probably stagnant, I mean, 10 years together and there are some things they could be working on to make it more fun and more present. Um, I do think that a lot of this had to do with her own mental health. All right. I told her I was willing to work on it. I moved my things into our spare room. I stayed for longer than I would, would have because she said she felt like she was having a mental breakdown. Yeah, something's going on with this woman. It's, I think, related to trauma. Later, she was diagnosed with ADHD. ADHD? I think Margaret would have passed out and fallen out of the chair if she heard that diagnosis. Okay, is it possible she's ADHD? Sure. Uh, with all of the traumas and things that she's had, suicidal, uh, alcoholism, cutting herself, ADHD would not be on the forefront of my mind here, okay? I don't know, you know, every clinician is different and um, I don't know anything about what happened in those sessions, but reading this, it, you know, I have a hard time believing this is ADHD. Hyperactivity, that's what they think this is about. Not being able to pay attention and hyperactivity. Um, Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me keep going. Later, she was diagnosed with ADHD and started seeing a therapist who disappeared without warning. Disappeared without warning. I don't know the details of that, but it sounds extremely unprofessional. Okay. 
It doesn't sound good to me. And neither did that diagnosis. But I'm not going to diagnose. Just keeping it in mind. We had gone to couples therapy a few times and learned about love languages and attachment. I'm mostly secure. She is not. In May, she said things were not working for her. I felt like I was waiting for her to show up and start working on it, but she was already done. I told her I thought she was making a mistake, but I would respect her decision. Good, you handled that well. She told me that she kept her needs and desires to herself because she felt too worthless to share them. How sad is that? She feels worthless. Doesn't that sound like a depression? Sounds like it to me. That's what I'd be looking for. I asked if I had ever done anything to make her feel that she couldn't share things with me, and she said no. I didn't beg or plead. She wanted to be friends, and I declined. I moved out, and I started going no contact in the end of May. I don't exist on social media, but I get messages from whenever my band does something. I'm not sure if that counts as an indirect direct. Well, yes, it does feel like one to me. Um, I'm not sure if it's something like that she's trying to get back together. I don't think that's the case, but it sounds like she was missing you and looking for excuses to contact you. I unfriended her on Facebook as to not be tempted or stumble upon any updates. We met once to catch up. She was on the verge of tears twice, but she kept it together and we kept it light. So what was the point of the meetup? Interesting. He doesn't say, um, I wonder if she was missing him. It doesn't sound like she was revisiting things yet. But yeah, interesting, right? Maybe she was just missing him and that, you know, they were together for 10 years. We had a very stable and supportive relationship, not toxic or tumultuous. She could be clingy and needy, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me as she was kind, warm, and a loving person. Communication was an issue, but I didn't know there was a problem. I also didn't learn how to communicate with people who were dealing with depression and trauma. Well, that's not easy to do. Um, I know we have some tips on it and some videos on it on the channel, but it's not like there's a magical solution. There are, you know, things you can consider and do your best, but it's not easy to do. It kind of feels like so confusing and um, almost helpless at times. And I can understand that, but you know, there are ways to try and improve, of course. I think I triggered an old wound somehow and her fear of abandonment led to a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, maybe you triggered an abandonment fear when she went to the family, but I think it was trauma. I think she had some flashbacks or stuff come up for her when she went back home. It was also sudden and it couldn't be solved with a conversation. Any tips? Do you think we have a chance of getting back together? Well, you know, the biggest thing for me is I feel like she's depressed and overwhelmed with trauma and this is about her history that she's got to work through. And I hope she gets help for it. I really do. Um, it'd be great if she could find a good trauma therapist in her area to work through this stuff. Because I think that's causing her to feel depressed and she doesn't know why and she thinks it's the relationship. Um, now, based on what you wrote about the relationship, it sounded solid. And, you know, obviously nothing's going to be perfect, but her complaints were what she was unhappy you didn't talk enough while she was on vacation i mean give me a break that's you know i'm not saying it's not a valid complaint but it hardly seems uh worth you know having any kind of breakup over it for after 10 years so i would say that she's got to get herself help and you know it would be good for you to get some counseling yourself not only to help you with this breakup but maybe getting a good trauma therapist that helps you understand what she went through and the struggles that she's going to continue to go through if you guys get back together. Uh, I think she'll need some time to be alone because she's not understanding why she's not un unhappy and maybe she'll be happy for a bit and relieved not to be in the relationship right now. But I think after some time, she's just going to wind up feeling depressed again and then thinking, oh, 
It wasn't the relationship that made me unhappy. And now I'm going to lose him. And he was a good guy. And why did I do this? So um, I would make sure that she's committed to personal growth and working through her traumas before you get back in with another relationship with her again. Because this is an opportunity for her to really get through that stuff before you guys try and repair this and get back together. Because if she doesn't, with the level of intensity of the trauma here, I think it will come back, even if it's maybe in a couple of years or whatever. Uh, maybe if you have kids together, she could have a postpartum depression. And so I hope that she makes uh, working on her issues the priority here, gets to a good place, and then you guys think about if you can work it out together, okay? So um, that's what I'd be looking for. And I'd be reluctant to try and repair it with her if she's not really willing to get the help. Because like I said, if uh, she doesn't, I think you could wind up in another breakup when you've got two kids together, okay? So that's what I would do in this situation. Get yourself a good uh, therapist and a good therapist who understands trauma. That would be helpful to you. Margaret has a phenomenal understanding of trauma. And so it would be good if you did a coaching with her as well. Talked about her trauma history with Margaret. And that would give you a really good understanding of what's going on with her too. But give her some time. I think you're going to hear from her again. I do. So hopefully you found this one helpful. And of course, if you want to get my help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth, and I will talk with you soon.